Hey, Mallory, I've learned what a pre-roll is. <laughs> what the heck is a Patreon? Well, a Patreon is a way for audiences to support artists and makers uh, whose content that they love with a monthly contribution to an account on patreon.com and for more information you can go to sohere.com slash patreon that's p-a-t-r-e-o-n and you'll be redirected to our patreon page where we outline possible contributions you could make and rewards and that's another way that you can support sohere.com now on to the podcast Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello and welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. And this is ZD Donahue. And today we are starting our episode off with a bit of a prompt from a question in our Facebook group. And the Facebook group is called The Self-Sewn Wardrobe, in case you don't know. Uh, by Mallory Donahue. By, yes. Oh, yeah, by Mallory Donahue, by me. I thought I was, like, going to make my own my own thing. Feel free. You know, when I'll I... Reti- I'll retire. You, no, can, and everybody's like, you can support me. I'm so excited I get to talk to CD. No. <laughs> I'm excited they get to talk to you, too. Uh, but what someone asked was, they said... Often, I, often we're of one mind, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so what someone asked was, I don't have a serger. Will my clothes be as durable when I make them as someone who does have a serger, is what they were asking. Yeah. Do you have to have a serger you know, to make your clothes durable? And uh, actually, what's kind of funny is I'm pretty sure this person now has a serger. Like a week later, like <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what the self sewn ward will, will do to yeah, you. Yes. yes. Okay. So I do. We ZD and I personally well love surgery. Some of the answers, I you know, yeah. I think that's a hard question. First of all, it there's a lot of variables. Yeah, there. there's a lot of variables, and some of the answers I thought were, I don't not really addressing. I think what she thought she was asking or sure they, they all seem to address things from a different angle and there was something said that I that I thought I don't think that might has is what has to do with durability sure so right. we're just gonna we're just gonna start fresh here and give our take on just garment durability right. in general right what, what makes what makes a garment durable and it really honestly kind of I think this applies to like home deck and bags to oh well you know, anything you sew I'm, anything you sew well because anything you sew needs to have the appropriate materials when i say materials i don't just mean the fabric i mean you know the the thread the stitch the seam allowance what the construction of it basically Absolutely. all those things count okay so let's start off with here move your water bottle i can't see your outline <laughs> my notes say this <laughs> thread let's talk about thread well i'm i'm i put down thread first because I honestly believe, as far as the tangible materials, the materials that are left in the project, thread is probably the most important thing. Or, you know, one reason it's so important, because I feel like there's a lot of crappy thread out there. <laughs> yes, and it's so easily sold to people. I don't know. They buy it so easily. Oh, this is 50 cents. Great. No, 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 or no, no. Or this was given to me, and it's 50 years old, yeah. and I'm going to use yeah. it. I'm going to send it through my sewing machine. Yeah. Or Just think, when you think of thread and that old, old, old thread, think of the term rotten cotton, because that's what happens. It yeah. rots. So any of your threads that are organically based, silk, cotton, Rayon. Rayon or viscose. And by the way, viscose and rayon are the same thing. Uh-huh. I saw that misinterpreted someplace in the self-sewn wardrobe but last week sometime. They're not similar. They're the same thing. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, they'll all rot. Yes. And because they're organic. Yep. Because they're, they're natural fibers. Right. Um, and polyester thread would be some of the most durable. Right. Thread. Nylon. Polyester. Yep. Not that it can't get damaged or be of low quality. Correct. But, you know, it's just kind of funny that we have to be like, use fairly recent (laughs) thread. (laughs) 
Yes. That the type of thread you use can make a difference. Uh, and we It makes a big difference in just threading your machine and what's going to happen to your machine and the stitch formation and how long that stitch is going to last in that clothing. There, there's a lot of things about thread that make a difference. So you can just be on the safe side and buy quality new. thread, <laughs> new thread. <laughs> and, you know, when everybody, everybody – Complains. I wasn't going to use the word complain. You can imagine what word I was going to use. Um, about time with sewing. Right. So if you're going to put your time into something, use some high quality thread. Well, I think about that all the time. I when people say I barely get the time to sew, and I'm using this fifty cent spool of thread, and I think, well, great, because it's going to be undone in no time, and your machine's going to be dirtier, and all these things are going to happen to you because you used an inferior quality of thread. The other thing I want to mention before I forget, as a sideline. I think these I think these kinds of threads are still out there. They used to have like polyester core, you know, with cotton spun over them. And forget all the mixed threads. Yeah, you're just, not a just, fan of the mixed fiber no, threads. No, just buy get yeah. the thread. What if you're buying nylon, buy nylon. If you're buying poly, poly. If you're buying cotton, buy cotton. The problem with those threads is if you get something that's a, a mixed fiber. Generally, it's organic type fiber with a man-made fiber, and one of those is going to rot before the other. Yeah. So, it's, it's, you know, the fibers don't have the same. And the reason they used to do this, I feel like, and correct me right. if I'm wrong, is that the synthetic fibers used to not feel quite as nice. That's right. And now the way they process them is so much nicer. No, absolutely. It was a disguise. Yeah. It was supposed to be a disguise to please the consumer. Uh -huh. And, you know... It, there's nothing pleasing about it, really. You right. just don't need it. So, um, you know, single single fiber thread. And when we say that natural fiber threads can rot, it doesn't mean that we never use them. Oh, no. Okay. I think some people have gotten right. confused about that. But it's something to keep in mind, like especially when we talk about making something like a swimsuit. I love to use swimsuits as an example because – they can be in chlorine or they right. can just be wet all the time and then they get laundered and uh, used. They can be in the sun. Right. And it's just a lot of stress on a fiber. Absolutely. You know, so um, definitely, okay, swimsuit versus, uh, I don't know, heirloom christening gown. Right, that's, that's worn once one every seven years or sure, something. Sure, okay, yeah. use whatever thread you like on there, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so anyway, keep that in mind. But yeah, thread quality is going to have – a lot to do with the durability. A big impact on the durability of your sewing and your garment. Whether or not you have a sewing machine or right. a serger or both, right? right? Right, And then the next is fabric. Right. And honestly, this is probably the least important to me. And why I'm going to say this is because if you, know, if you know your fabrics, you know what to expect of them. Yeah. So if I buy what I call Halloween fabric, and Mallory knows what that is, it's that like cheapy acetate sort of. Cheapy acetate. <laughs> I, I, don't, <laughs> I didn't know what you were going to say. Well, I, didn't think what I thought you, you were just going to say cheap Cheap ass fabric. Yes. Cheap ass acetate. Cheapy acetate. <laughs> okay, that too. Anyway, um, all of that. But I don't expect it to last. I don't care if it lasts. I don't even care if it presses real great. The, I'm going to use that fabric for something that's fun, fun, easy. To, and I'm probably using it for something that takes me more time to sew than it actually gets worn. Now, I mean, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. I'm okay. glad we put these two topics together because I have heard somebody say before, oh, I have some of that really old thread. I'm going to use it on a Halloween costume. I wouldn't put the old thread through my sewing machine. Well, that would be my, right. Okay. No, thread's Neither the most important thing. No. Okay. Put that thread in a nice little jar that you can look at it up on your shelf, decorate your sewing room, and go, that was my grandmother's thread. It's no good anymore, but I love to look at it. And if you put the cheapy acetate fabric through your sewing machine, that's not going to cause the type of right. trouble that cheap thread, thread is would. Good. Right. Now, you should be cleaning your machine. Right. But the nature of different fabrics, like if that acetate really, that stuff, I'm thinking, I like to call it flag fabric too. 
maybe that will give like yeah some stuff it's, that it's flags not quite the nylon flag yeah. stuff but yeah it's so, acetatey it's it's it, it it is halloween costume fabric yes putting that through your machine isn't really going to create a ton of lint relative right. to no. what if you bought a really like expensive yeah it will dull your needle yeah yeah but, what but you're you, gonna change that what if you bought a really expensive like cotton flannel that'll lint up your machine faster. actually that has more lint right yeah, yeah but yeah. again we're we're, it's okay. we're also addressing knowing your fabrics uh-huh. and what to expect and what they're going to do yeah so right. let's get let's go back to that but i just wanted to say that it's it's um it's safer sometimes for your equipment to work with cheap fabric right i would versus, say if you're gonna go cheap go cheap on yeah, fabric skimp on the fabric now yeah. okay now let's get back though to durability but, but durability if you're if you're making maybe you're making some other kind of costume that needs to last forever for generations it's a dance costume that gets performed in for a season every year and you want it to last then don't do the cheapy acetate stuff no you know buy some quality fabric that you feel will last polyester will last it will be hot okay silk will last it will be hot too silk will not last as long as polyester i mean these are all things that that we learn as we so so or go along you know wool is great for making some costumes but it's expensive and it's it, hot and it's really it's hot. hot you know sometimes maybe a poly wool blend would be a better choice for a costume maybe it would it will hold up a little bit better and you can think about this uh for with durability some people have you know sometimes you don't know okay right uh, there was a big discussion about some stretch lace that people were buying that after they wore it for like about a year say they made a t-shirt out of it that like under the arms or places where mm-hmm. they that got rubbed, that those elastic fibers were coming loose. You know, yeah. they were and and you, and know? you know, well, some of the things there too is if you don't know exactly how old that elastic fiber was when you bought it, or you know, it that I I'm not surprised when fabrics wear down. Oh, I'm not either, especially if it's something I wear a lot and sure. launder a lot. La- laundering wears things out. And and you just talked about how like uh, you know wool is probably a really good example of an um it's not indestructible because of course things can eat it yeah and, bugs like to eat it that's yeah. a big deal but yes it can right. be a very strong fiber etc right but I don't want to wear wool all the time right well and you silk know? is a very strong fiber yes. but you know it's a little bit more difficult to launder um. And actually, it's very fragile when it comes to, like, UV light. Yes, yes. So, you know, every everything has its positives and everything has its negatives. And we do sew for ourselves so that we can possibly, you know, make less waste. Right. Okay. Right. And that, that is a part of it, of course. But, you know, it's not like I think if I sew this thing, it's going to last 100 years automatically. You yeah, know. You know, there are very few things I want to last 100 years. <laughs> in fact, boy, I could get off on that, too. You just took me in a different. When someone says, oh, the plastic sewing machines don't last as long, how long does it need to last? <laughs> okay. I don't need a sewing machine to last more than 80 years because I probably won't. Well, <laughs> and we do have the plastic. We I just think about that first baby lock imagine surgery you have that's, that's like. right. 20, 30 years old or whatever, you know. Well, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's it's at least twenty years old. Yeah. So anyway, uh, but yes, I I totally I right. understand. Where How you're long from do you there. really want something to okay, last? But if you also let's talk about let's get back to fabric right. for durability a, a little bit because um, Jennifer mentioned she was talking about the tiny hem uh-huh. video which Sam is currently Jennifer working on. Jennifer who? Jennifer Play. All right. Okay. Uh, Sam's working on that video like ten feet away from us right now. And she was saying she was having all this trouble, like, doing the tiny hem. And she finally right. figured out. But I think one of her comments, she said, like, this fabric starts to fray when I overhandle it. Well, I, I think I said, when does it start to fray? And she goes, when I touch it or something. <laughs> and I thought that I wouldn't even have that fabric. Well, and I, I mean, got... I thought, how bad do you want this fabric is what I really thought. Sure. I mean, I mean it might have had something else about it that she really wanted. Sure. And I have done that before. And, yeah. you know, Karen just posted in the group, she said, this is my Charlie caftan. It's beautiful. And the fabric made me want to yeah, shoot myself. Yeah, she hated you it. Know? Right. She hated the fabric. And it really was pretty, too. So, Jennifer, I just right. want to say, I've been there right. with the fabrics that are super hard to handle. Yes. Um, but also, if you are handling that fabric and you're like, this is just, like, crap that is 
coming apart on me, that's something that could possibly affect the durability well, of the garment. Well, I was going to say, do I really want to sew this fabric? Because the next, you know, if I if I accidentally stress the seam, what's going to happen there? So this is where testing can come in handy. So if you really are, if you've got fabric in your stash, fabric that was given to you, or if you're contemplating maybe using a fabric for a, an outfit, maybe you could get like a swatch or buy a smaller amount at the store right. or something and you could test some seams on it yes right we Absolutely. like to test yes yeah and there are some sheer fabrics i think jennifer's fabric was like a sheer or a crepe like a poly i thought it was a gauzy thing but i don't remember um i've had some sheer fabrics that i've tested certain stitches on it's been great and then others i'm like <laughs> oh terrible right this is awful or some you know? you're like surprised like this stitch is this yeah easy? why is this working is this so, so well uh, yeah right right wow wow so Fabric, it depends. We're saying so in terms of I'm durability. I'm saying fabric is arbitrary. How's yeah, that? Almost. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, we want high quality. And, you know, I have had this. I think the group is really great for this because I noticed I got a knit from a certain supplier. And it really pilled terrible yeah. on me. That, yeah, and that's upsetting. And I was like, oh, well, okay. I mean, they're PJ pants, whatever, right? And then somebody else in the group said that that happened to them, too. Uh -huh. And I was like, okay, it's not just me. Right. Um, you know, good to right, know. Right, So you can get feedback on things like that. You can. There are reviews. Yes. Or people ask, ask in your communities, whether online or in person, have you used this for this? And you should be able to get. Right. You know, so, but, but I also, I'm sort of, I'm like you. I'm like, well, you know, if you make yourself a pair of PJ pants, they might not last you until you're in the nursing home. That's right. You know, maybe they will, maybe they won't. Well, I am always amazed, actually, that I I will think about something and, like, it starts to wear out or something, or, you know, yeah. and, and I'll go, you know, this didn't last very long. And then I think about it and I realize it's, like, 10 years old. So how many times did I wash it? Like, right. Like, at least 100, probably. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I'm like, oh, I'm expecting more than is realistic. Yes. Or, you know, I'm really bad about this. I'll be like, oh, I got my, my first pair of ginger jeans. I like, yeah. I needed to mend them. That you wore every yeah. single day after I, you married, I, well, yeah, married after I made them. If, made them. Yeah. I would have married them. Yeah, she I was married, married them. to them. That's why she wore them every day. She's married to them. Yeah, I, I literally wore those jeans every day. And since I wore them like every day, I washed them like a couple times a week right. instead of just like right. once a week. Where if I, I'll wear a pair of jeans twice. Oh, yeah. Maybe yeah. three yeah. times. Now with a kid, though, there's always like a booger. Right. Like a well, or booger if you put them on me. in the afternoon and wear them for three hours, yeah, you know, that's not even a whole day. So you might get the third day. So out those of them. jeans got like a year of wear in like four <laughs> months or something, and I'm like, oh yeah, I guess I'm not surprised that right. like I'll have to, I don't know, redo right. this like stitch because I have beat the crap out of these jeans. That's right. Talk about um, distressing jeans. You did okay? it. I did it. I was <laughs> like, I faded the thighs out on these jeans because <laughs> I wore them every darn day. So the fabric isn't going to be uh, the the main variable, and I think we're going to take a message break and come back to the crux of this person's question, Ooh, which is yeah. the stitches and the machines and whatnot uh, after our message break, right? Okay. Okay, Mom, are you clear on what a Patreon is? I think so. Do you know what we're offering for our Patreon you <laughs> contributors? Said you said... Different levels. What What's a level have to do with anything? There are different levels. So oh, not like a level to level like your lumber or your wall or whatever. No. Nope. Levels. Levels. Levels uh, at which you can contribute. So this is a way for our um, people who maybe don't buy sewing supplies from us or who live in a place where it's hard to ship sewing supplies. Yeah, because I know some of that shipping can get up there. That's right. And we always think it's great for you to support your local sewing stores Absolutely. as well. And so if you just think that we're a rollicking good time, the <laughs> Patreon is one way to support our media so we can keep making videos and keep Sam in bonbons and gilded pedicures. Okay. Gilded pedicures. So our first level is the $3 a month level. And like you said, some people... Pay more for coffee. That's right. Even you don't drink coffee, so you nope. don't even, you don't even know. No. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> for three dollars a month, you're supporting So Here Media, and you're actually going to get a handwritten love note from, from 
you. You're gonna, yeah, oh, ha, ha. Oh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you'll you'll get a handwritten love note um, after after you pledge the three dollars a month, and it'll be on a fun postcard that you've designed, that or I've designed. I've designed, or somebody designed. That's that, right. That works here and lives here. And then the next level is an eight dollar a month level, and you'll get a postcard, two okay. coffees, <laughs> oh, two co- two point. Six six coffees. <laughs> uh, you'll you'll get the postcard, but then you'll also get a special so porter keychain. Ah, exclusive yes. to our so porters, and uh, that's the only way you can get it. That's to right. Pledge this level. We're not gonna the the Patreon rewards are going to be exclusive to the Patreon okay. donors. Okay, and then our uh, highest level. Oh, these all have cute names like the straight stitch and the back stitch, and the highest level is the zigzag. Okay. Okay. That's your favorite sewing term. Stitch. <laughs> oh, it's my absolute favorite. It's the only one and I ever use. This is an eighteen dollar a month pledge, and you'll get a love note, and you'll get a keychain, and you will also get access to a super secret private Facebook group where Ooh. you and I go live. Uh oh. Uh, once a month, and we do rollicking fun things. Rollicking like you say. fun things, yes, yes. We'll do. We'll have lots of fun. It's going to be a little bit more produced than my live broadcast in the self sewn wardrobe. We're going to have a camera person here, so Sam. we'll have like some <laughs> planned content. Yes, we'll have some planned content. We'll talk to you all. We'll answer questions. And since we'll have a camera person here, what that means is we can zoom in. We can we actually can like, respond to your questions in, in well, a better way. And we can zoom in on sewing machines on if we're, we're demoing doing, right. the technique. And we can do that live too. Real camera shots, yeah. Yeah. So uh, we introduced the Patreon um, a little bit ago, and there are uh, lots of people who contributed. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, And actually, the most popular level has been the zigzag. All right. (laughs) But any amount really helps us to uh, support the hosting fees, the equipment upkeep, um, pay our staff. Uh, and ourselves, and make more fun sewing media for Wait you. Wait a minute. You said you acted like I got paid. Yeah. <laughs> if enough people pledge to the Patreon, I could get paid we can too. start paying you. Okay. okay. <laughs> so uh, once again, go to sewhere.com slash Patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Like you're a patron, but in the future or something i see uh and you can see the different levels there and you will get access to that facebook group your what happens here is your card is charged at the first of the month Uh uh-huh and then you'll get access um or you'll receive a notification that your reward has shipped okay i see and you can also choose to uh contribute in any amount of your choice so if you're like you know all I got right now is one dollar to throw at these ladies. Throw you it. You can do that too. Okay. <laughs> all right. So here.com slash Patreon. Thank you to all of our wonderful patrons. So, 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 sewing out loud. And we're back. Yeah. Okay. So I think this is the, our main issue. These well, two. These I think two these things. are the things that people, I don't know. I think this was part of the question that yes. was asked in the self sewn group. Uh, we've talked about thread. We've talked about fabric. I, I guess we've worn it out, so to speak. Uh, and then the next thing is basically how we make these seams. So Your seams. Two things are involved. Your seam allowance, right? Mm-hmm. And the actual formation of the stitch that makes your seam. Right. So to us at home, basically what the two things, the two types of machines – you know, I get if we we could say three if we wanted to add in our um, cover lock cover stitch, yeah, our chain. cover lock, yeah. Okay, so let's say three types of machines. One is our lock stitch, and that is your regular straight stitch sewing machine that I assume all of us have. <laughs> I guess I guess there could be somebody without one out there. It's got a needle and a right. bobbin, a right? needle and a bobbin. Yep, the needle goes up and down. You get a straight stitch from it, and you can dial in other stitches a lot of times. Zigzags. Zigzags. But that's what but that's called a, a lock stitch. But a needle on the top and a bobbin on the bottom, and that's your lock stitch machine. And then you can have a serger, which works with needles and loopers. Correct. No bobbin. No bobbin. Okay. And this was uh, something in her question. She said, I have overlock stitches on my sewing machine, and I 
gently corrected her and said, actually, you don't have over lock right. stitches on your sewing machine. You may have over casting Correct. stitches on your sewing machine. And this is where I come in with, you know, vocabulary does matter. And she was there's great. There's two like, different oh, things. Right. Good. Like now I know this. Right. Okay. Right. So. The overlock stitch on the sewing machine is a stitch that will finish the edge of your fabric for you. This can increase the durability of a garment. Some type of finish on the edge of your fabric right. will prevent fraying. Right. Right? And you can do this with And over if you have a fraying fabric, you should have yes. some sort of seam finish. So with overlock stitches on your sewing machine, you'll get that needle and bobbin thread and they're there you you'll probably have like a nice special foot that has a little stitch finger okay. on it. You I'm not Okay, you just said overlock stitches on your sewing machine. Okay. So uh, Overcasting stitches on your sewing. Okay. There we go. She, okay. Yeah, mom's mom's correcting me there. So the overcast, excuse me, the overcasting stitches on your sewing machine are only made up of those two threads. That's right. They'll go over the side of your fabric to finish it off and prevent fraying. Whereas the overlock stitches on a serger or an overlock machine or an overlocker, those are interchangeable yep. terms. Those are made with a needle and two loopers, right. and it's or different. One, it can be one looper. It can be one looper. Right. Yep, that's right. Um, so, yes, they they form the stitch in a different way. And the serger stitches are like they're knitted stitches, so they aren't locked on each other, so they stretch. That's right. If they're on a stretch fabric, so that can be useful. If, if they're not on a stretch fabric. They will not stretch. So it can be useful for your knits, That's right? That's correct. So when she says durability of clothing, she didn't say, I'm making all woven clothing or I'm right. making all knit clothing. You know, right. I would imagine she's wanting to have a the full range of capabilities to sew yeah. whatever she well, wants, or, right? Well, or, I, I mean, I, I don't know her. and uh -huh. We haven't talked with her a lot. Or she just needed some clarification on what all of this was. Yes. Like she may be asking a sort of simplistic question to a compli for a complicated answer. And it's certainly like, I mean, really all of this is like the essence of sewing. Right. Thread fabric, right. seam allowance, right. and stitches, right? right? Yeah, I, so, I just don't, I don't know what, I don't no, know so how much experience really she has into or, it with or her. what, right. So there are different stitches that are appropriate for different fabrics. Correct. And different applications so if you try to seam together a very stretchy fabric with the default straight stitch on your machine that stitch won't stretch with your fabric the stitches will pop well they won't pop if you don't stretch your fabric well that's true okay as soon so as they you can... stretch your fabric they're gonna pop yeah so so in the wear or the putting on of your garment the stitches pop so when stitches pop, there's no longer a seam, and I believe that that would greatly um, decrease the durability of your garment, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> absolutely. I think that's well, almost the and, main and thing. And those fibers will work against each other because mm -hmm. it's stretchy, and then you start stretching that seam. Uh -huh. you're, you're basically starting to wear at those fibers that want to stretch, and you're putting them against that, that thread that doesn't stretch. So... Stretchy, so stitches that are meant for stretch fabric should be used on stretch fabrics. Right. Alternatively, now you can use your sewing machine. Yep. Your lock mm -hmm. stitch sewing machine on stretchy fabrics, but you have to use a stretch stitch. And the That's basic right. one of those would be a type of zig, a some sort of zigzag stitch. A zigzag stitch will give you a stretchiness that a straight stitch will not. And you will see these. Uh, you will see some sort of instruction about this in it, your owner's manual. Especially any any machine, more modern type machine, there are stretch stitches. And it Shoot, describes even on some them. of the real old ones. Well, you know? but, but yeah. I, I, what I want to say is it's still a fairly. It, here's another thing we need to talk about is what's antique and what's not. Well, right. Uh, but um, uh, I mean, what some people. <laughs> what some people out there are calling antique machines are younger than me. So. Right. Anyway. Um, but to get the most stretch, right? Yeah. To get the most possible stretch you can get in a garment, a serger is what you need. So the serger stitch, and we have talked about this a lot. If this is new to you, 
like we've got an episode on sergers. We have an episode on serger stitches. Right. Okay. So this has been covered, but the serger will provide that stitch that allows for stretch and recovery. Maximum stretch. And, re- and, and recovery. recovery right? And recovery. Right. Yeah. I think that's really important. Well, right. And it also gives you a neat enclo- edge. edge. It encloses that those two layers of fabric. And so you have a nice con- contained stitch. So alternatively... If you're working with some kind of, I don't know, super sheer, loosely woven stuff that wants to fray when you touch it, if you try to seam that on the serger, not leaving a larger seam allowance and also using the less stable overlock stitch of an overlocker or serger, you could end up possibly with a seam that splits apart when it is stressed. Yes. Okay. Could be unhappy. You could be unhappy. The serger can finish the edge of that crazy, right, sandy, fray-y fabric. I, you know, you always say sewing with sand, like with chiffon. Right. That's how I picture that fabric. It could finish that edge, but you need, you might need a, a bigger seam allowance there. Do you want to? Do we want to talk about seam allowance for a little bit? We might come back to stitches some more. We too. do because I'm and in this talking about seam allowance, um, I want to talk about finishing the seam's edge. Prior to construction. Do it. Okay. <laughs> so I have seen and posted more than once, okay, in our uh, in our Facebook page, don't ever finish your seams on the serger before you put your garment together. Does that sound like something I would say, Mallory? No. no. And I have seen the excuse for it being, well, you'll get your pieces out of shape or you'll misshape or you'll stretch your seam or or, or, okay well if that's happening it shouldn't be you got Uh, another problem you you have another (laughs) problem you should be able to send a woven flat woven piece of fabric through your serger without it rippling without it distorting you you don't take anything off the edge you just what i i call shave the edge you might see a little lint coming off I or call something just like this make some lint right yeah it's called making lint in, in our studio and actually then you will have a more stable piece of fabric to work with okay you're not going to go around a arm's eye right mm-hmm. or a uh, you know, sleeve the cap. sleeve cap or around the neck hole or something like that. You're only going to do basically your more straight seams, right? That can be then, you know, they're put together later. When we finish a seam on a sleeve, we do it after we set the sleeve. So I just want to point out that finishing seams can happen in different orders. That's right. Depending on where they're located on the garment, right. what kind of garment it is, right. et cetera, et cetera. Right. Okay. Absolutely. And that might be another podcast yeah. a little bit there. But this can help with the durability Absolutely. of a garment, right? Absolutely. And I, I don't want anybody to mistake this for stay stitching either. Mm-hmm. There are parts of the garment that may need to be stay stitched. And that would be maybe an armhole or a neck a neckline. Hole or neckline or something ne- like neck that. Neckhole, neckline, right, whatever. Neckline, whatever you call it. <laughs> neckhole so, sounds weird, doesn't it? So finishing those edges, when this person brought up overlock or overcasting stitches, finishing the edge of the fabric can be helpful. Prior to... Construction, but also after. Yeah, after I mean, too. But what I'm what I want to say is honestly, it's easier prior to construction. That it's really better because you can press them. So I would finish my my edge, mm-hmm. okay, on my serger, my woven edge. I'm finishing on my serger, three thread, narrow as wide as it allows, and still keeps my edge intact Mm -hmm. right as long as it allows as long as i'm sorry as long as it allows yes i'm i'm making the stitches as far as part as i can and then i go to and i press that Uh and i relax those fibers and now it's nice and flat honestly that's the best way to construct as far as i'm concerned you will not distort if you're if you're handling your fabric so wildly while you're doing that that you're distorting you're going to be distorting it anyway yeah but just a little caveat there i okay. feel like you're saying this is the best way to do it but then we said no it's not the best way to do it for every seam like an arm's eye or a sleeve right, cap okay right. so I, just... i'm saying the the seams <laughs> that that 
that the can be finished. The straight seams that you can finish. Okay. That is the best way to do it. You'll get the nicest. You won't be manipulating the whole garment mm -hmm. when you're just trying to finish one seam. So, so when she asked, do I have to have a serger? You don't have to. You can overcast that on your sewing machine. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, and still preserve the seam allowance. Right. So seam allowance, we did a whole podcast on seam allowance very recently. And this is important. And we we don't really budge on this one. Nope. You can do whatever you want in your own sewing room. But you need to use appropriate seam allowances. And especially for a woven fabric, it needs to be a half inch or more. Right. Um, if you'd like to argue with that, you may. have, Or you may mm -hmm. construct yours with less, but I'm pretty sure you're going to lack some durability. That Yes. If you want a more durable garment, give it that half inch to five-eighths of an inch seam allowance. I don't even see how people can do a quarter-inch seam allowance and finish it also on a woven fabric. It doesn't right. even seem possible to me hardly. And, it, of course, if you're going to do like a French seam or something like that, that's different because you're going to enclose. It's a different enclose, type of finish. Yeah, you're going to enclose That's that right. raw edge. Um, and then people were like, oh, but you, you know, you want that five-eighths of an inch seam allowance, but then there's grading or, uh, you know, a, or trimming of the when seam. When you grade, that would be an enclosed seam. That's and right. And you'd be doing some top stitching also probably. Or understitching. Or understitching. Or something right. like that. That's yes. what I meant. I'm sorry. I did mean understitching. Well, it could be top, you know. Yeah, could. it could be top yeah. stitching too. You're right. So keep that in mind as you go along. But... But if you're looking for durability in garments, you really need that that seam allowance. But let's talk about stitch formation because this came up. Mary, right. Mary posted that. So we're big advocates of the three thread overlock narrow in serger land. Uh huh. Three T N, three thread narrow. You're right. Okay. Uh, the the three T N is our favorite stitch for constructing knit garments. Everything I'm wearing right now. <laughs> I think moment. I'm all 3TN, too. 3TN, yeah. okay. Uh, Including my underpants. Yep. My yeah. leggings that are stretching yeah. over my gigantimous belly are 3TN, and I've washed them several times. Nothing's popped. But Mary said, and I don't, Mary won't mind me saying this, I don't think. She goes, oh, I used a three-thread narrow, and I tried on my muslin and my underwear. Right. Because they're making underwear right now. She says, and the thread popped. And I'm like, well, I, I think there's something wrong with her stitch. I would the say formation yes, of the stitch. It, it, there's either something wrong with it, or I she possibly could have her stitches too close together. Yeah, you cannot pile stitches upon each other and have a a stitch you know length of 0. 0.5 or zero and expect those to stretch. There's too much. People like to put too many stitches in. I've noticed that. I think that we often, oh gosh, when we're constructing knits, we're in the three to four range almost always. Uh, yeah. For constructing knits, yeah. almost always. Especially I mean, if we know it's a garment that's going to stretch. Yes. And if, when I mean stretch, I'm talking about a leotard. I'm talking about yoga clothes. I'm talking about active wear And those garments sort. stretch almost more sometimes like when you put them on. Than when, than you're, when you're wearing when them. When you're in them, doing them, right. So so a few people were like, oh, no, I'd use a four thread, four thread. And then people were coming in saying, hey, you know, ZD and Mallory like the three thread. And, you know, some of our uh, our minions, right. you know, were saying that. And that's why Mary brought it up. You know, she, right. she was trying to use that three thread. And... Okay, any no stitch okay. should just and, pop when and, you put them on. And when somebody on. says, "Well, I used the stitch and then it came my stitch came out." Okay, either it wasn't formed correctly or you did not secure the stitch at the end of, of stitching. Right. Now, I think I guess what I thought happened with her is it it popped. It popped through, yeah. Okay, I'm super spoiled. We are super spoiled with our auto tensioning baby lock sergers. And I've never had the problem where I just sew a seam and then, like, go to stretch the fabric and right. it pops. It's never happened to me it's, either. I don't have that issue. I have, though, I've taught other people on other types right. of machines, and there has been the issue. It's like the – it's like – the tension on the needle is it's, you probably, right. Too one of high. the tensions on one of the threads is too tight. Is what's yeah. happened. So keep keep that in mind. You do need to do a test seam right. on your fabric to Absolutely. make sure it's going to that 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 stitch. So this is stitch formation, right? And this was maybe like a little bit back where we were talking about zigzags versus straight stitches. You need to test and make sure that's going to work. So I also have had 
a customer to come in and go, look, I made this skirt and it has this back seam and you can see my stitches on the serger. Uh -huh. And I said, that's because you're serging a woven fabric and you will never get a tight, close stitch on a woven with a serger. A serger is made to, a serger stitch is made to stretch to be relaxed, to spring backwards and forwards, so right. to speak. So if you're going to construct a woven fabric, you might want a lock stitch or a chain stitch. Yep. And here's the deal. You can do that on a Halloween costume because who cares? Right. No, <laughs> but, I definitely but, yeah. but you probably don't want it in the back of your pencil skirt that you're wearing to work, okay? Yeah, and I think sometimes I, I think as machine dealers – Tell me if you saw this. I saw people trying to justify the cost of a serger by saying this is going to replace my sewing machine. Oh, I don't know. I guess. I saw it a lot, you I think feel so? like. And I, I never... Or it's going to do everything in the whole world for me, or yeah, it's and, magical. And, or... you know, we sold some some pricey sergers. Right. You know, uh, for sure. And so I understood that, but I never... I never uh, condoned that. Or... Well, or people will think the serger's quicker because you're trimming your seams and getting your seam, you know, all at the same time. But it's not, a, like you said, it's not appropriate for everything. In fact, just the... make that skirt out of Ponte, okay? There you go, there, and that'll work. Um, but the durability has to do. It's you can't say I have to have a serger for durability if um, all the time. No. If I was going to make leggings only. Ever, ever, I might say, oh, yeah, a serger for durability, <laughs> you know. But right. then, but I know I like to sew lots of different things. That's right. So you need a sewing machine for durability. I think you just have to use the tools correctly. Right. Right. It, there are different tools. For, you know, sewing has evolved. Fabrics have evolved. Threads have evolved. Machines will evolve. Right. Okay. That it all goes together. That's why it works that way, and that's why we have so many choices. Yes, and. You do say, Mom, I think this is a really good thing. You know, your sewing machine is your oven. Right. It's your range, your it's oven. Your, it's your convection right. oven. And your serger is your microwave. That's right. Except microwaves are so <laughs> nice nowadays. <laughs> well, and so are sergers because yes. now my sergers chain stitches. I mean, if I had to, I could, because I have a, I use an ovation. Uh -huh. That's a combination machine, serger, and um, cover stitch chain right. machine. I could actually construct anything on there right okay i don't i mean but i could but you should get when people kind of come into the game and they're like should i get a sewing machine or a serger first i'd say you get yourself machine. a nice sewing machine well first. A sewing that's the basics it's uh -huh. starting out i mean um if you want a full service kitchen you probably should get a range first right okay so right. that you have those basic tools to to cook with and then your serger, it, it can act as sort of a bonus. Right. Um, and I, it, do we want to be honest here? I actually use my serger with more than my sewing machine now. I think I do right now, too. I, I'm going through this phase. Um, I wear a lot of active wear. Yeah, we're making a lot I of make, knit garments. I make rash guards. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I'm not, I don't do as much woven things. I used to make a lot of woven costumes, I guess, for stage. Uh -huh. And and I, you know, and there was home deck in there and all that, you know, besides garment sewing. I just don't do as many wovens as mm -hmm. I used to. Yeah, I woke up in the middle of the night last night and had this awesome idea for a backpack, okay? But it was woven, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's something that's going to be done on the sewing machine, right, right. you know, and the foot is different and all that jazz, right, right. you know. So, but, um, yeah, I guess we've, we've sort of taken that group member question as a jumping off point and went to talk to you about that durability right. issue. And I think we've, there are just I so many I think durability things. is knowing your product, mm -hmm. knowing what you want and knowing what you expect. Yes. Okay. One, and not using crappy thread. Just, right. Okay. And one last thing. <laughs> um, people often talk about laundering wears clothes out. Well, Okay, there's a lot of things involved there. <laughs> yes, if you have a washing machine that's like, yo, 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 and chews things up, that will wear things out more. You used to have one of those. Yeah. Um, usually the non-agitator washing machines wear things out less. You have garments you know should be um, laundered by hand. You also have garments you know should never hit 
high, high heat. Mm -hmm. The heat wears things out. The other thing that will wear garments out is what kind of laundry product you use. Uh If you use a laundry product that stays in, that has a lot of perfumes and things like that, that will wear out. And then, but also, the bacteria. So if you don't laundry your clothes, (laughs) what will happen is the bacteria, the deodorants, the perfumes, the skin oils, all these things will also react to your clothing. Yes. So, you know, you got to, you got to, yeah, there's a balance. Mallory's tail roll laundry. I'm bad. I'm bad at doing laundry and mom's really good at doing laundry. I'm really good. I'm just real particular. But, um. (laughs) So all those things have to do with durability. Yes. You yes, know, you they just do. can't say, am I making a durable garment? I mean, you know, what do you want durable? You want a pair of, of jeans, you know, that you can wear through the mud and do all these things with and wash and, uh, you know, maybe that's probably the most durable uh, garment on earth. Right, right. But I can't wear jeans every day. Yeah, mom's not a big fan of it. Well, and I'm not wearing not jeans any- right now. Either. Not anymore. <laughs> Used to. Okay, well, I think that if you got any questions or tips on durability, we'd love to have you share them. You can comment on this podcast episode by going to sewingoutloud.com. You can also find us on Instagram. We are ZD Sewing Studio. And you can join the Self Sewn Wardrobe group uh, by going on Facebook and um, searching for the Self Sewn Wardrobe. Uh, and you can always email me at mallory at sewhere.com. So long and so happy. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SewHere.com.